Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Donate A Garden. And today we're gonna to be planting two new plants. One is Obedient Plant and the other is Verbascum. And then we're also gonna be harvesting a bunch of flowers, specifically Mexican sunflower tithonia before our first frost tomorrow. Okay, so I have five of these, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five of these large kind of cattle troughs at the back of the property. I like the cattle troughs. I think eventually I want to paint them so that maybe they're a deeper color, but I typically will do um, what you see here, which is one four inch uh, trailing lantana, trailing purple lantana on the front edge of each of the troughs. And so I've got them all the way across the, um, across the entire back, which is absolutely beautiful. But I do need to get some plants into the ground because we do have cooler weather coming and these are some perennials. Now, I'm gonna be planting two perennials today. One's obedient plant and one is verbascum and they are both very invasive and spread like wildflower, which is why they are gone here in um, <laughs> the troughs containers. So the soil level is really um, low on these. So I'm gonna to do is I'm going to start by pulling out the lantana, pulling out the drip line, and then I'll show you guys the depth, and then we're going to fill them back up with some new soil. So I'm going to start quite simply by just cutting this lantana back. This is not a perennial lantana in our area. This guy doesn't come back year after year. You can see that just a couple of snips, and that is one entire plant, which is amazing. And I know you're probably like, oh, why are you cutting it now? Well, we're expecting frost. And I have other plants and I will plant a new one next year. I haven't cut all of them back. I just am cutting the two troughs that we're working on today. Um, but so what I'm also doing right now is I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all the stakes that are holding the drip line in place so that I can get this drip line out of the way while I add new compost and soil, or actually new soil. Okay, that's kind of up out of the way. All right, let's look at the depth of the soil. Now, originally when I filled this, I filled this with a wide variety of logs, branches, that type of stuff, um, and then I came back and added soil and compost. And originally it was about up to here, so it just dropped a good six inches. Um, which is a lot. <laughs> and so I think that's good. I mean, that means all the stuff at the base is starting to rot out, um, which is really good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm really just gonna come back in with um, some raised bed soil. And I'm gonna start by just putting in one bag. We'll see where we're at and then we'll decide if we need another bag. I do have a bare root clematis in here. And yeah, I could dig it up, but I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm just gonna leave it in here, see how it does. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and top this with another half bag so we get a little bit higher because I do know that this is gonna sink some more. Okay, yeah, I think that was a good decision. Adding a little bit more. So I ended up adding about three cubic feet of soil, raised bed soil. You can use a potty mix too if you wanted, but don't use garden soil in this bed. Okay. Nice, okay, so that's pretty simple. So let's go back and lay back out my drip lines. These planters were my first kind of bigger thoroughfare into raised beds. I think they're fairly cost effective. I like the casual look, it goes with the look of my house. All right, there we go, all set. Okay, so in this container, we're gonna be planting verbascum and I'll put up a picture of it. This is Verbascum Southern Charm. It's a 
Flowers in pastel shades of rose to ivory, late spring to summer, about three feet tall, and it takes full sun. And this, these are spreaders. <laughs> so that's why they're going in the container and not directly into one of my garden beds. And basically this is from Bluestone Perennials. So it comes in a biodegradable pot. Make sure I show you guys. Biodegradable pot uh, that works really well. So literally I just take this and I plant it. You can already see the roots trying to come out the sides, which is really great. So I'm gonna add a little bit of plant tone and I'm gonna get this in the ground. So I ordered a lot of plants from Bluestone Perennials this year. If you haven't checked out that video, you totally should. I'm going to work this towards about the center of here. Back is the clematis and forward I will plant, of course, more tra trailing lantana because my pollinators love it. So I'm excited about this particular one because it's a really great plant for cut flowers, which will be great. Okay, so I'm also going to put a layer of mulch on here because we are at winter time and I am planting in new plants. So I'm going to go ahead and add some mulch in here just to make sure that we keep things nice and warm. I also don't want my plants drying out during the winter. Frost is really hard. Uh, frost and freezes are really hard on dry plants and dry roots. So the mulch will help maintain that. mulch will help maintain the moisture and keep these plants protected. And as always, remember you're watering at the base of the plant. We're not really trying to get the foliage really wet. Do you want to give this a nice soak? Especially since we've got some cooler tips tomorrow. Okay, let's work on the obedient plant. Okay, so same thing right here. I'm just going to cut back the lantana. It's glorious, y'all. I'm telling you, if you're in my area, plant this. Wonderful. Woo! One plant. <laughs> All right, let me just tuck that back out of here. lines back down. So I'll put a picture of the obedient plant up here. It's also from Bluestone Perennials. This has the biodegradable top. A lot of breeze today. It feels really good. It's already at tons of roots in the bottom. Right. Here. So, obedient plant is a big spreader as well. I'm excited to utilize it for cut flowers, but it will be contained through this to this trough, and I think it'll be really charming for it to have you know white flowers spilling out of this trough. I think it'll be beautiful. Okay, let's get. Going. Mulch is something I want to do better on, especially with my Texas heat and trying to be more conservative with water use. I want to start laying more mulch in my gardens to help maintain moisture so that Perhaps I don't have to use as much water when caring for them throughout the hottest and driest parts of the year. All right, let's water it. Okay, so I have tithonia plants right here, and you can see they fell down in a storm. So my husband and I came through and ended up staking them up with this guy and a couple of bungee cords 
And so I was just thinking, hey, this is my first year growing Tithonia. I don't know how well it's going to do with the weather, the colder weather coming out. So I thought I would come through and do a little harvesting. Now I'm still cutting directly above a set of leaves just because maybe this will come through this first kind of little frost pretty quick. I mean, y'all, it's only going to get down to like 35, right? So there's still a really good chance everything will be fine. Of course, there's always a chance for a little bit of freeze, but anyway, I wanted to, I haven't done anything with these this year yet. And so I wanted to get in here and be able to at least do one design with them before I potentially lose them. So just harvesting a few. This was super fun to grow. I will not be growing this in this raised bed next year. I'm going to grow it against my fence. And I think it'll be easier to keep them from blowing over in the wind. Also, they're so massive. I think it would be really cool. It'll be across this back fence back here. But I think it'd be very cool to have them across that back fence. Um, and almost like a wall of Tithonia. <laughs> that would be so cool. Uh, so anyway, I'll be looking at that and like I said, I'm just continuing to cut right a bit of a set of leaves so that it can put on more growth because it can put on quadruple the amount of flowers you're seeing right here. This is only the start. <laughs> These are glorious. I'll come over and show you. Okay, so I'm wanting to create a fall design. So over here, I'm gonna harvest some of the hot biscuits amaranthus. Uh, it definitely has a fall look and vibe to it. Let me look over here, okay. I do like to go through and like pick off the leaves so that they're not in the design, but I'm not gonna do that right this moment. These are definitely at the end of their season. They are definitely reseeding themselves. However, this whole bed is getting transformed into um, a chrysanthemum bed next year. And so I'm actually gonna be putting down landscape cloth to keep all the seed coming back. And this bed's gonna get cleared out, cleared out pretty well. It has a few random plants in here that I might try to transplant, but we'll see. Okay, next I have some sedum over here. Let me go ahead and get harvested. Sedum actually does really ready well with the frost, but I'm really wanting it to, oops. I'm really wanting these um, kind of harvest colors for this arrangement. And I love sedum in arrangements. Okay, I'm gonna host, uh, harvest some white polar bear zinnias. I think they'll have a really good look in this design as well. I recently did a pretty strong cutback on it, so I'm happy to come out here and see a lot of new fresher blooms. Hopefully these will make it through this kind of light frost and I can still get in a few more weeks. The frost is early for us this year. We don't usually get one until Thanksgiving time. At least not thing that's like kills everything, if that makes sense. 
I think it's literally gonna only be like 35, 36 for like an hour. So not very long at all. Okay, and let's grab some of this yellow Celosia over here, which I really enjoyed this color this year. It's very different. I'd like to grow some more. In the future, this was actually just a volunteer. This year, but it's brought me a lot of joy. color is just glorious. Some of these stems are shorter because I've been trimming off this guy. Okay, and I'm also gonna harvest some basil. Basil is the one plant I'm a little bit like more nervous than anything else about for this weather. It is only hardy to about 35 degrees. What we're about to run into. <laughs> so sorry, I'm trying to get it. I had like used a stake to hold it up and now it's all caught up in the stake. So let's see what I can do to get out of here. Okay, so this is the cardinal basil that I grew this year and absolutely adore. I hope to grow it for years to come, but I wanted to get some of this before we lost, um, lost it to the weather. Okay, so off camera, I ended up clipping some uh, proven winners at Coleus called Sedona Sunset. And this will be my first time utilizing it as a cut flower. I do suggest if you get Coleus um, to cut it and then to put it in water for 24 hours before utilizing it in an arrangement as it can be kind of finicky. Okay, super happy with my progress today, getting the obedient plant planted as well as the verbasca and then getting a beautiful harvest before our frost tomorrow morning all right you guys hope you enjoyed today's video as always she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be thanks y'all